Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Vladimir. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning Vladimir. Vladimir. Good to see you. Yes. Good nice to you. see you all here. I'm glad you have some kind of conversation a little bit before <laughs> serious <laughs> matter comes. Yes. <laughs> the dependency of the people born in the last generation towards technology now. <laughs> Right. It is now. The time is now. And the word is love. Yeah. You remember? Yes. <clears throat> there was a band. The time is now and the word is love. <clears throat> there was a song. Right. Which, which, which band is this? This is yes. Okay. It's called. It's an American okay. band. Okay. Yeah. Avant-garde rock long ago. It was in 70s something. No wonder they fizzled out. <laughs> right. Well, they grew, grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a different mood this morning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we need it. Otherwise, we we'll won't fall into this. Um, seriousness of matter. All right, today we have this new hymn. Let us look yes. into it. Uh, 73. 73. Um, let me start with mantra. Om Vang me manasi pratishthe tam anome vachi pratishthe tam aviravir maedhi vedasyama ani stha shrutam me ma prahasi anena dhite na horatram samdadhami Ritam Vadishyami, Satyam Vadishyami, Tanma Mavatu, Tadvaktara Mavatu, Avatu Mam, Avatu Vaktaram, Avatu Vaktaram, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. All right, and project the hymn. So this is the last hymn of Parashara Shaktya. Mm. Rair nayah pitrivito vayodhah supranitih Chekitusho na shasuh, sionashih, sionashih atitih na prinano, hoteva sadma vidhato vitarit. Rairna yach pitrivito vayodhah, he is like an ancestral wealth that founds our strength. Vayodhach founds our strength, Shubin translates. Supranitich, who perfect in his leading, <clears throat> like the command of the one who knows. Chikitushona uh, Shasuch. He is like a guest uh, lying happily, well pleased. Siona Sheikh Atitichna Prinanach. He is like a priest of invocation and increases the house of his worshipper. Oteva Sadma Vidhato Vitarit. Um, there is some beautiful music if we read consciously the, the verses. Rair nayach pitrivito vayodhach, supranitich, 
Чеки тушоу на шасух, сио на ших, а ти тирна пренанах, готева садма, видато витарит. He is like, yes, and my interpretation is a bit different because I want always to highlight the difference. Is the wealth discovered by forefathers established establishes the extension of our life in space and time so that wealth which was discovered by Petris is actually holding or establishing longer time for our life here or longer space and time um, and uh, as the instruction of the one who knows Shah so his instruction Chikitushach of the one who knows or who can focus consciousness on any object of uh, sense that leads perfectly forward. So praniti, who has praniti, perfect, yeah, leading forward perfectly. Again, forward is an important word in time and space as a happy and beloved guest on our soft seat. Can you imagine such a situation? Happy and beloved guest on our sofa somewhere. So we give him the most comfort and he is, and we love him being comforted, comfort, feeling comfort in our life, in our house. I remember when I was in, uh, in uh, India, we were traveling in uh, uh, Raja Mundri, and there was uh, a head of Sri Aurobindo Society, and he invited us to his home. And I can't forget that hospitality. It was like bliss, really. He gave me the best place where he was always seated. I was sitting there in one room where there was air condition because the only one room had air condition. So it was for me. <laughs> so for me to rest, to eat, everybody was outside. There was no air condition. <laughs> and I was there in that room and they switched off light closed the curtains that I could rest after food a little, you know. And it was like, I couldn't believe that this is even possible. Yeah, I was overwhelmed by by that. So it's something like that, you know. Siyona <laughs> Sheikh, sitting in the, or lying in the most comfortable place, in the most atitihna, as if the guest prinana, beloved, and he is also as the summoner of the gods, Hoteva, in the house of the worshipper, Sadma. He is overwhelming and crossing over in all directions, Vitarit. Of the one who is worshipping, Vidhatach Sadma, in the place of, or in the house of the one who does the sacrifice he is overwhelmed or overwhelming rather in all directions his presence is felt all over it's a very psychological actually um, description all of them are very psychological um and then next verse Devona yah savita satyamanma kratvani pati avrijanani vishva puru prashasto amatirna satya atmeva shevo didhishai yo bhut. Interesting form didhishai yo bhut would not be permitted in classical Sanskrit. He is like the divine son, true in his thoughts, and guards by his will all our strong places. Kratva, by his kratu, nipati, he protects 
Vrijanani Vishva, all the strong places. He is like a splendor manifoldly expressed. Puruprashastach, Amatih Nasatyach. He is like the blissful self, Atmeva Sheva. And our support, this Saushyabendu simplifies this, but he gives a full footnote here, or oh, he is one to be meditated on, upheld in thought, blissful like the self. So this is did he shayo. I translate it differently, he is to be established within us. To be held within us. Um, um, so, like the god Savitar, he is of the true mind. As we know we, from the description by Sri Aurobindo, Agni is actually carries within himself the power, the true power. Power and knowledge are merged in him. He represents that supramental action actually within the material form, yeah, which is growing here. And he has all the qualities and all the um, faculties of the supramental Godhead. And that's why he's here compared with the sun, Savitar, true in his thoughts. It is something which we always kind of overlook when we think with our mind in hierarchical structures. We think that the lower we come, the less it is divine. All, But Agni is the immortal among mortals. He is the one who is engaged in constant pushing forward the whole evolution. And because of that, he has this Satya Manma, he has the true thought, like the god Savitar, to manifest the divine here. He has even more strength then, because he has to do the work in the darkness. I have a question here, mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir. Uh, from yes. the description that you just gave about Agni, uh, to my mind, I may be, I don't know, mistaken, but to my mind, there doesn't seem to be a difference between Agni and the psychic self. It's the yeah. same. The psychic self is the Agni, the flame within. Yes. Uh, yes. Psychic being is uh, formed yeah, later as individual, but as a psychic presence, it is that uh, power of flame which becomes, which sustains the whole earthly nature as mother says about the psychic presence is everywhere in the plants in animals in, in the whole in the whole earthly atmosphere earth itself is a psychic being of the universe yeah? so whoever wants to change or to grow in consciousness he has to take the earthly body here yeah. on earth and this is the great privilege. We actually don't know about this or don't think about this. But being in this body, in this difficult body, <laughs> is a privilege. Because only here we can grow in consciousness. Later, when we leave the body, we will not be able to grow in consciousness. We make a plan in the psychic world to grow in consciousness and then we have to come down here into the body and start growing changing so in that sense of course uh, agni is essential because he provides that connection to the growth of consciousness here he is the engine of that growth the evolutionary deity yeah? which provides this change, constant change of the fallen emanations. When we come down, we take onto ourselves these fallen emanations. Yeah? We take onto us uh, the physical, the vital, the mental, all those elements of the fallen emanations which, which have to grow in consciousness. And we provide the light in that way. Yeah? And Agni is there providing the support for all of us because he is, 
He is our father, and we are his sparks. So those are our strong places that he's guarding? Yes, about strong places. Um, this is a bit unexpected for me, because strong places are usually associated with the stalls in which the, the cattle is held, yeah? and uh, which have to be broken and the cattle has to be the herds of the sun have to be released but he is not only nipati shubindo says he he guards by his will all our strong places locations of our of our storage of our intuitions which we received over time he is in charge of all our wealth d during our past evolution. Yeah? He holds all that wealth safe, as it were. I translate it differently. By the power of will, he fulfills us from within and protects all strong places because there is this word nipati which is very interesting ni inwardly party protects but we can translate it as inwardly fills us and maybe fills all our strong places in other places he is called Jata Vedas, the one who knows all the births, all that we achieved, because it is his work. Uh, we assign it to ourselves as individuals, but truly speaking, we, do, we are doing here the divine work. And uh, everything what happens to us is happening with his support. And everything we achieve here and realize in spiritual sense, all transformations, all achievements are his achievements. Um, well, it's such a different world we are describing. <laughs> there is no us anymore in that form. It's only instrumental we. Huh? Ahankara is only instrumental by nature, by Prakriti. She created that instrument for action in this world. But the presence of his power of Purusha is everywhere. It is him. It is all his Indriyas, yes? Karmendriyas, Jnanendriyas. It is him who acts within. So I thought that he fulfills or fills inwardly our uh, hard places, our strong places. That was the idea first, but I didn't dare to translate it this way. So I left it half, kind of one foot there, one foot here, not going for any kind of final, but literally, kratva, by the force, he inwardly fulfills our strong places, fills, literally. I add fulfills, and it, it, it adds a little more psychological meaning. Just simply fills is very physical. So fills, so fills can it be also uh, transforms? Well, transforms, yes, fulfills, yes, gives transforms. full realization in the, in the, because that is, that is what we are here for. We are here to store all our inspirations within the inconscient place, within the hidden strong places, and then we have to realize them. One day it will change. And it will be quite sudden and unexpected, as Shubindo describes, even in Savitri. And many in Auroville also know about this. They read Satprem and the mother, and they know that the, the description is given of this transformation will be a sudden shift. Yeah? We will stay in this kind of cocoon for quite some time, then boom, and then we, we realize that it will be a... a 
total dis self discovery on, on totally different levels. Uh, you remember the passage from Savitri uh, as the wise men talk and sleep here yeah, and believe shall be not till the work is done. Now, the believe shall be not till the work is done, but one, one moment we will realize that the work is done. And who was doing it? We were not even aware that we were instrumental to this work. We are so packed in our smallness, in our small life, in our considerations, in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our fears, all that which we consider to be all that amalgam of, you know, of all kinds of vibrations, feelings, emotions, we consider ourselves, Shubhendu says, it's very far from the truth. We just got onto ourselves all this mess of vibrations and we believe that we represent them or we are them and it is far from the truth. Just do the work here. We hold on to the fire. We are the sparks of this fire and it takes on onto itself all this darkness. And many times it looks like the darkness prevails, uh, but uh, it is only temporarily. It's just a bigger portion of darkness we took onto ourselves before the flame is starting to work. And then, strangely enough, flame is always managing the darkness. At the end, uh, the good is always prevailing. Did you notice? The truth is always prevailing. And every time I notice that I watched yesterday this Netflix, uh, The Women of War, there is a new film, and very well done. I, it's a French film. Yeah? This, um, so, and there I was thinking, mm, how, how beautiful it is when the truth is breaking through. And you know the truth, it's such a relief. Even you lose the whole world. And if, even everybody is hating you and blaming you, it is such a relief. You are free from that corner of distortion. Oh, those vrijanani, vrijanam, interesting word, is actually a distortion, strong place, because it is distorted. It is not straightforward, yes? Mm. It is something which is holding you back, which is not allowing you to be yourself, to be open. Yeah? And, um, and every time the truth breaks through, you feel within you, I feel myself, <laughs> oh, finally, it doesn't matter what, is, what are the consequences, you feel again uh, yourself. Mm. This tension between untrue and true is uh, fundamental for this creation. So it's going on. So darkness with untrue prevails. It piles up and then the truth straightens up everything. Everything becomes again clear. Everything finds its true place and position. So this is the Agni doing that work. So and praised by many, the truth beyond opinions. This is the truth. This is an important, it's according to this film also. There are so many opinions. There are so many views on how we live. So, and that is the truth which is simple. One doesn't have to have opinion to have that truth. Yeah? The truth is simple. It is what it is. One doesn't have to, to play the truth to be truthful. Hmm? It's unthinkable. Thought cannot really manage it. He is like a blessed self to be established within us. To be meditated on, to be held in our thoughts. And then, Devona yach prativim, Vishvadhayach, 
upakšeti hitamitro na rađa, porah sadah šarma sado na virah, a na vadja patiđu števa na ri. He is like a god upholding the world. And that is true. He is the god upholding the world. He is uh, Rudra's son. He is Rudra's action, which is upholding all the nature, all the universe on his shoulders. And he, because that is him who entered into the fallen emanations, which were in the oblivion, they had to disappear, they were not, until he entered. And when he descended, they they were saved, as Shivendu says in Savitri. Non beings night could never have been saved if being had not plunged into the dark. That being which plunged into the dark saved the night. And not only night, but also saved the night from the darkness in the future, but also saved the night as it is in the present. Also interesting. It saved the very uh, actuality or functionality of the night, because the night has a particular function for manifestation. It holds all these divine beings in their own individual form and develops this, them in individual framework. Uh, so, he is upholding the whole world and he inhabits earth like a good and friendly king. Inhabits the earth, that is his region. He brings this psychic presence into earth atmosphere. He is like a company of heroes sitting in, in our front, like the whole army protecting us from, from our front where we go forward, dwelling in our house. He is as if a blameless wife, beloved of her Lord. This is the ideal of the past, beloved wife, blameless, and so on. Or let us say, as blameless power of the soul, you know, which is acting constantly in accordance with the soul's will. It's will of the soul. Because Nadi is, um, and Nara, they are loaded with different meaning in the Veda. You know? Nara is the heroic power of the soul, or hero souls, as Shirobindo translates. And he even says that Nara is used, and it is used many times, with, with many godheads, with great godheads, with Adityas. Mitra and Varuna are Naras. So how come? What does it mean, really? So later, Nara is translated as, uh, as male, yeah? as a hero in the post-Vedic, but in the Veda it is that power, power to, to face the obstacles, to move forward. It's a heroic power of the soul of the divine. So Nadi is his will, his strength, you know, so to say. Just to remove that idea of the wife. Hmm. It's immediately bringing down the whole vision. I have my own interpretation as if a God who upholds the world, he lives on the vast earth like a king surrounded by good friends. Could be also translated the Hito, Hitamitrach. Uh, and like heroic powers of the soul, he is seated in front, in the front, seated in blissful protection or home. Sharma Sadakh. Sharma is, Shobindo translates usually as blissful protection, but it is also protection as a home. And actually, home is a blissful protection. 
inside home you feel bliss and happiness and you can be yourself you can relax you don't need to fight with the outer forces the the symbolism the symbolic meaning of the home is that that you can be yourself inside yeah? it's outside you have to be somebody else you have to face the difficulties the the forces the fights um pretend to be someone <laughs> else but when you come home you can be yourself again you can relax all things are known to you all things are supporting you it's that blissful protection could it also mean the physical body ladimir yeah can be yeah, because home and physical body yeah, are very closely related in the symbolism of the vedas yes. so he is seated in front he is seated in the uh, blissful protection in the home in the body like the like the heroic um like the company of heroes virah i translate as the heroic powers of the soul virah anavadya as blameless patijushta beloved by the husband nari wife I think um, Rishi wants to create the uh, the sense of it, you know, that he piles up the epithets which have to somewhere break us through and give us a sense of that uh, presence of that force in us. Uh, and then, Tamtvanaro dame anityam idham agnesa chantak shitishu dhruvasu agni, oh sorry, adhi dhyumnam nidadhuh bhuri asmin bhavash vishvayuh dharuno rainam. Tam tvanaro dame anityam idam, such art thou of fire to whom man cleaves a chanta. Um, kindle eternal, kindled eternal in the house, in the abiding worlds of thy habitation. Kshitishu dhruvasu uh, idam in the steady dwellings um nityam idham constantly kindled dame in the house you know? uh, literally it is you that people in all the steady dwellings follow sachanta cling to you know? O Agni, when you are kindled and constantly burning. This kindling of the fire and constantly burning and keeping him burning is a constant, yes, a idea of the weather. Kindling is important. And we can feel many times that, uh, that our fire kind of is veiling or is kind of fading away and it's not so active and it has to be rekindled so kindling means bringing him forward in his action closer to the surface it is burning always inside it is flaming deep within but to bridge that flaming and to bring it closer to the surface is what is called kindling uh, and constantly burning means we have to constantly hold on to it, hold on to his flaming, working, giving food to it, yes, making offering, oblation uh, with clarified barter, with our clarified mentality. That means our purified mind has to support his flaming. We have to think, we have to dwell with our mind on these higher ideas 
that is for him food, food which is kindling it constantly, making it burn. It's a very tangible power force. It's not some kind of abstraction or imagination. When once it is kindled, you can't but move forward in spiritual sense. You see ev the whole world differently. You see the whole world as the means for the fire to grow. That's why you want to offer everything to this flame, because the delight and power and knowledge are growing in you. So why should you keep something in the dark for your darker selves, for your egoistic usage? It doesn't make sense anymore once it is kindled. But before it is kindled, it, be, it is a concept of some kind, yeah? which we also recognize because we've been there in the past and we know the, the value of it. We cannot totally, how to say, experience it, but we know that we may come to it again. I felt the other day that kindling is a very special idea in the Veda. Uh, and there's constantly use idham, samidham, uh, totally kindled, susamidham, perfectly totally kindled. And that means that all the parts of our mental, vital and physical consciousness are feeding him, yeah? becoming food for his growth. This is the divine growing in us, in our house, Dame. This is the tapas, right? You're referring to the uh, tapas, the process of tapas, Agni tapas. Yeah, there are two Agnis. Yeah, we, long ago we spoke about this, yes. one of which is tapas, yeah? yes. the effort of which we have to, to start with. We have to, to take two sticks and get the fire out of it. And these two, two Aranis, yes, they are heaven and earth, our mental and physical being. So with this friction between them, we create the heat. Heat is hidden within the matter, with hidden within the nature, and it has to flame out. Yeah, we mm. are kind of uh, not yet totally dry. When we dry up with this kind of with work of tapasya, yes. we prepare the materials to to offer to Agni. So once it, he is flaming, this is one Agni. But once he is kindled in the heart then uh, it is like a divine flame or psychic being in front and uh, he plays different role, so to say. It's no more that uh, effort in the nature which we usually make. And between mm -hmm. these two flames there is a considerable difference mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. psychological attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mother speaks about the path of monkey, baby monkey and baby cat. So this flame in the heart is a surrender, only surrender. Yes? There is nothing else. Psychic doesn't want to do tapasya. The psychic doesn't do tapasya. It only wants to give itself to the divine. Uh, the other members who are generating the flame in the nature, they do tapas, you know, mind, vital, they work hard to make it work and they, it works because it is hidden there. So it will flame. I don't know why it was made like this, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's what we we are dealing with, it's our psychology. We have two different flames. One is seeking the satisfaction in nature, total satisfaction, absolute divine satisfaction in nature, in all the members of nature. And the other is seeking only the divine, yeah? and wants only the divine. 
in nature, but differently, directly calling, surrendering, uh, offering everything to the divine. Two centers in us. And of the same fire. As it is said in the other hymn so beautifully, we will come to it most probably, that fire is worshipped in two forms, as idia, priya, beloved, sought with adoration, and as yajatra, as worthy of sacrifice. So these two forms, and both of them are valid, and none of them prevails. They both coexist. So, upon him they established within a vast light. They have found it within, upon thee, a great light, become a universal life holder of the reachers. Adhi, interestingly, Adhi Dadhu, literally above they established, above Adhi, Ni, within, above and within, two prefixes, yeah? they established. They established within the heart and above the head, <laughs> the shining light, vast, Bhuri, Asmin, in you. In him, literally. Bhava, become Vishvayuk, the universal life. Dharuno Rainam, the holder of all the riches. So the idea is that Agni will flame in all the parts of our being. The divine has to transform our mind, vital and physical and become the universal life force holding all the riches. And this manifestation becomes the riches, actually. It is a hidden riches, yeah? all the darkened forms, all the unregenerated yet forms, they are the hidden riches. Once they are transformed, we discover that this is the, the wealth of the divine. His being, his infinite being manifested in time and space. And it generates a lot of delight. Sri associates uh, the riches, the wealth with the delight also. It is that we recognize the truth of the divine through delight. This is usually the way to know whether you are true or not. If it is not generating delight, if you are not happy with the truth, then that truth is questionable. <laughs> okay, maybe I will stop for your observations, questions a bit, otherwise I'm just carrying forward the whole thing. Yes, yeah, please go ahead, just switch on the microphone. Ah, yeah. So, uh, I was thinking about the first verse, uh, Vladimir, that protecting the strong places, uh, could it be something like, until the seed is ready to grow, it has to be protected? The first, first one, I think. Oh, no, second one, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, I, it's... Yeah. It's like uh, guiding the the seed that has to grow through these various lives so that it is not out of season or out of time or something. Yeah, I like this, yes. I can see the, the meaning in other places. It is said that the divine 
mother pregnant with the fire with the flame she does not deliver him to his father mm. until he grew totally there and once he is totally ready to be born yeah, she turns to be Mahishi the great one and she delivers only then to him to his father so he has to grow the divine within has to grow secretly separately as it were cannot be open or delivered too early to the hostile time as shirbindo says don't show yeah don't reveal the secret name the sacred name to hostile time too soon because it will be you know it will stop it prevent it damage it so to say from growth so it needs to be secretly growing and uh, yes uh, this is the idea most probably yes yeah it's a good suggestion um, because you see we forget all our past births and that is probably for this reason alone that if we knew we would probably harm it ourselves i was just thinking very loosely around it very nice yeah yes why why we should be yes disconnected from the memory of the past there is a reason because the memory is kept in the divine and mother describes the it uh, beautifully by the way there is a new book which i would recommend by um, sumitra basso i'm yeah, showing you and this um it's called the consciousness based psychology and there he in chapter of reincarnation he gives very good quotations you can read how we preserve our psychic memory yeah. did you get it on amazon because i was looking for it this morning Oh, he sent to me the copy and just okay. But it's only available in the Indian website in the Lotus Press or something or Roma or something. We will do yeah. something. We will have a meeting. I mean, uh, the presentation of this book. I think in February twelfth or something, and then we will order, make an order, very nicely written, without yes. extra words, which is saving a lot of time and energy. Still, it is so thick. <laughs> yes, and a lot of quotations proper, yeah, to the point. Mm -hmm. Big also, the whole page of Shirobindo's description, which is very useful. Some people say you should not do this, but I think we should, yeah. We should select the most, uh, the clarity has to come. And this book clarifies many interesting points. On the ego and psychic is an excellent chapter. And the difference between the two. Yeah. So. So in Savitri, in the canto on Nirvana and the all negating absolute, Sri Aurobindo says, O soul, bear not thy kingdom to the foe. Mm. Consent to hide thy royalty of bliss, lest time and fate find out its avenues and beat with thunderous knock upon thy gates yeah you see so beautiful so much to the point yeah thank you so much this is that yes protection uh, there is another passage a hostile time i remember there is a hostile time you know also <laughs> waiting for us and can knock knock us out and every insincerity becomes a, a crack within our protection this sharman the sharma is the blissful protection you know the house in which we dwell so we need to take care of it we have to become sincere and sincerity is the best protection truthfulness is the best protection to be true doesn't matter that doesn't fit somebody's idea or that damages your reputation yeah truth is truth it doesn't have to be you don't have to be frank you know like i will tell you everything <laughs> no thank you <laughs> don't tell me everything <laughs> spare me <laughs> from telling me everything uh, 
but true in the moment of time is very important that creates the production also you know when you were saying about this uh, sudden change i suddenly remembered that line uh, that is uh, a step and always god and sky or something like that isn't it there's a line like that yeah oh, one step or something is yeah, the sudden that... transformation absolute yes, yes. sudden transformation yeah yeah and mother speaks also on this i don't remember the, this line but mother actually clarifies this of the sudden transformation that it will come not the way we think it will come no? it's not a gradual transformation of course we are working 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 in that direction and then there will be a, a, like like the descent of that super mind in 1956 and of suddenly all the psychic beings were flaming more luminous like mother compares five 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 watts volts bulb shining hundred volt bulbs so it was a big shift and it was in all humanity everybody received the light few felt it of course because we are all engaged on the surface but we are not the same beings anymore and it is it is kind of visible those who lived longer life yeah we could see the shift in humanity mm. in spite of all the darkness is rising yes and falsehood is dominating politics and uh, commerce and everything else yes well, that had to be so and mother even described this that the politics politicians will change they will change last <laughs> in this so everything will change but politician will still <laughs> be there in the falsehood holding on to the darkness uh, so to expect from them some kind of honesty or openness is very difficult uh, or impossible even the moment they're in that framework the even if they are good people i noticed this in our world good people come to the entry group and they become nasty people and i was thinking how is that possible even that good people turn into the people of this kind and this is this some kind of formation or power formation yes which we do not do not uh, we are not aware of totally and cannot resist so it creeps in there are so many imperfections in the system which allow these forces to hold us back must be due to the insincerity and insincerity is proposed as sincerity yes there are so many tricks that the mind yes. can play and the ego spiritualized mm -hmm. ego yeah, especially spiritualized ego and we even discussed this the other day we read the descent into the night and uh, the, yeah. uh, the next canto of the mother falsehood. of falsehood and yeah. the sons mother and the sons of, of evil, evil. Yeah. this uh, there shirobindo describes the amazing thing and he actually warns us also about spiritual societies that the high ideal creates a very low feedback also from the darkness the higher you claim the more comes yeah and the more you allow yourself to do so this kind of insincerity is built on on that that there is mismatch between between ourselves and our application of our action or presentation or power as mother says the total harmony between our inner self and the outer action would be the measurement of sincerity but since we claim such a high ideal like supramentalization yeah then the whole darkness rises and we allow ourselves to go there we must because we claim the high ideal mm. so it is permitted it is opening for us so we fall into it mm. and so this is a, we look at russia today for example they claim the human unity and what they do they kill people 
So what what Hitler was claiming? He was claiming the the new world, you know, transformed world, Aryan society. Everybody is perfect. He wanted to create a perfect society, perfect humanity. But what did he do? He created concentration camps. So this is the, these two, the higher you claim, and you are not matching that height, yeah, the lower it enters and you will have to respond to it. You will have to embody it. So it's better to, to be true to what you are, yeah, to understand where you are, and um, more humble in a way. <laughs> with the ideals. And we are also taking uh, Rig Veda. Rig Veda is always talking about the fight with darker forces. So. Yeah. Later, you don't have that problem. Right. There's something else, the ego. You deal with the ego. You don't deal with darker forces. Hmm. Oh, they are. Vladimir, can you just explain that last sentence once again? Later on, you don't have to deal with the darker forces, you deal with the ego. What does that mean? Is there a difference? Well, yeah, the difference in awareness, right? You just don't see that uh, you, you put onto yourself, onto your responsibility, because we enter into the mental structure, which is narrowing us down to the manas, into the sense mind. And we believe that our sense mind decides, yes, everything, that it is sense mind, which is selecting what to see, what to hear, what to speak, and so on. So we build up that egoistic sense very strongly, and then we understand that it is the an obstacle. It is the language which Shubhind also speaks, because he speaks to us in our own language. But in the pre pre Sankhyaic paradigm, there was a different view. Oh, like Vedic, for example, they didn't. They don't speak about ahankara nowhere. Did you see anywhere ahankara something? Problem with that? No. So they look at the world a bit differently. So they see that the forces um, we are fighting, we are the forces of light. We have there in us the, the spark, the divine spark, which has to be kindled, which has to be brought forward, meet the obstacles. The obstacles are coming. They will always come. So it's, there is no kind of wishy-washy with the ego, good ego, bad ego, you know. There is no more this kind of reconciliation with your own um, kind mm. of comforts yeah? mm. we know or, what we or, or or our own inadequacies i yeah. think with the ego we kind of talk about our yeah. own inadequacies a lot yeah so. right and we don't criticize ourselves in that sense we don't hate ourselves that's they all happened because mental structure kind of shifted our perception yes towards a more individual kind of finding and realization and capacity and so on. Here, it is a bit different and it helps us actually. It helps us to see more impersonally what we are, what we are here for, what others are doing. We don't judge others anymore. We see that they are under attack, yeah, under siege of these forces and they cannot but uh, suffer from them. It's another paradigm which helps us to to understand uh, vaster. Um, kind of so task. the ego is a ego is a later development. Yes, post Vedic, post Vedic development. Sankhya, that's Sankhya. From mm -hmm. Sankhya we have Ahankara, and which is Rajasic mainly. Yes, and um, Ahankara holds, of course, the whole everything else because. And manas, manas is the synthesizer of indriyas. Now, in the pre-Vedic, in the pre sankhyaic manas is one of the faculties of Purusha. He is not dominating others. Mm -hmm. He is not suppressing them. He is not choosing. He is one of. So he is equal to speech. Mm -hmm. Manas and vak, chakshuk and shrotram. These are the 
equal qualities or faculties of Purusha, of universal Purusha. So, and there is no Ahankara in between. So to say, if we, that's why Kena would say, for example, it is not yes. by the by the sight that you see Brahman, but by Brahman you see. It is mm -hmm. not by the word that you speak Brahman, but by Brahman that you speak. So by Purusha, by spirit, we see, hear, think, it is by him. So no Ahamkara in between, you see? There's no self-responsibility mm -hmm. that I am choosing what to to deal yeah. with. My mind will select what to see. Not yet. Yeah. So they were oriented to this more impersonal vision of our task here, our evolutionary work here. It was more simpler because as soon as the ego came, then all the gunas came. Yeah, gunas, gunas were there, they formed, yes, this is Sankhya. Mm -hmm. Sankhya is interesting in one regard that it is actually the true paradigm for, for mental structure of consciousness. We think like this today, yes? We think that it is our mind which is selecting what the senses provide. We don't believe that senses are connected to the spirit, to the Purusha. Yeah? We don't have that connection direct. We kind of cut it off. We put in between manas, sense mind, and then ahankara on the top. And here we are. We are holding these two. And of course, beyond there is buddhi, which some kind of pure reason, conceptual thinking, which is less personal, yeah, much less. It's more impersonal. And that's it. That's our understanding of ourselves today. So we have to overcome the separation that we have created. Right. Ahankara has to go. Ahankara, yes. That separation one, has to go. Right. Once it is going, we will see that the Indriyas are actually connected to Purusha. Yes. They are not Prakriti's uh, only creation. Yeah? Yes. We are so yes. full of gaps. Mm -hmm. And we, yes, we personalized everything. We mean, made it. It's a need. It's a Kali Yuga. It's narrowing down the streams yeah, of consciousness. We need to work out the most of this, the narrow streams of consciousness. All right. Um, yeah. Robin, you wanted to say something. I heard your voice. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, back to politics. Okay. <laughs> I, actually, what I've noticed is that when people get together in groups, um, you know, a small group, uh, even a spiritual group, um, people seem to shift. Um, the dynamics of a group cause people to behave in a certain way for communication purposes, for administrative purposes. You make rules that people have to follow and so on. And that seems to bring out the worst in people. And uh, and you get, as you were saying, the lowest uh, common denominator becomes the bedrock that then everybody is supposed to behave by. And, you know, a small group is just a microcosm of, you know, the government or whatever. And, and then the... The individual, and I think this is why it is so critically important that we maintain freedom in the world and in countries, is because then you have the option to do as you as you feel God is moving you to do and to be. We have to have that freedom. If we don't have that freedom, then I think we've lost the most valuable thing that we can possibly lose in the world. And and that's what governments love to do is to take away that freedom absolutely so nice. all, all of them do this subtly or overtly yeah and it and even the people who think that they're doing good who think that they're compassionate people they're the, they're the worst yeah they have the, been the ones who have caused the most damage and the most the most destruction in their own countries to their own people 
I notice also this that people who claim that they work for people, this is the worst kind. Yeah. You know, Stalin was calling himself the slave of people. This was the worst tyrant ever. Yeah. So the higher the claim to work for more, I work not for myself, but for others, I help others. This claim itself is a very yeah. dangerous claim. Lao Tzu said a very beautiful statement. He said that left alone, people take care of themselves. And that's the best thing that we can do for other people is to leave them alone because then they can take care of their own life as they see fit, as is appropriate for them in their location, their country, their culture, whatever. But when one person comes along who, who loves humanity <laughs> and wants to, you know, do the best for everybody, That's right. they're, the, they're the worst tyrants of all. <laughs> right. right. Absolutely. And we learn nothing from history because this has been going on and on, this compassionate helping and and things turning out into not what was 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 being talked about. It has been going on for a long time. We don't we learn. We should be learning from it. We should have learned <laughs> yeah. from it. Yeah. Slowly, slowly we learn. But what you said, Robin, is learning. Yeah, it's a big yeah. learning. Uh, Shubindu helps us immensely in this uh, regard. He he actually values individual freedom most. Yeah? Mm. He says without individual freedom, nothing is possible. Nothing is achievable. If that is uh, surrendered or subdued by the communal ego, yeah, then here you are. You can't evolve. You can't develop. You stagnate slowly. That's how Soviet Union lost, yeah, and so the Western world uh, won because of that liberty, that freedom of individual. That is the most important power. Then, of course, there has to be arrangement in the society, yes, but on the ground of the freedom of individual. Society has to help individual to be free and to develop as a that's the only role of the society no yeah. other role and then we have to have the we have to have dharma within us rather than having it put into rules that are then enforced in society and and what i see happening right now actually is the worst form of you know, it used to be in a very gross form that people could organize a country and force people to behave a certain way. Now, with the technology that is, that exists, yeah. and this virus business is a good example of countries enforcing people to have to take a, an experimental vaccine. Uh, this, if this got out of hand, uh, this could be far worse than anything that. Stalin or Lenin or Mao ever came up with. Because then you can be controlled at a chemical level in your body. And, and the technology for that exists today. And the, if, if anything really worries me, that does. Yeah. There was someone uh, in uh, Ukraine I was telling interesting thing that nowadays the manipulation is so subtle with the opinion of people for example, through TV, through media, yes? Um, some people are often on the screen, and because they are often on the screen, they form the opinion. So that's it. That's enough to do. <laughs> you don't need to impose anything. You just show some people more often than others on the screen. That's it. Here you will be formed subconsciously, all your thoughts will be influenced. And, so, and yeah. sorry, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, no, no. This, so, this is so people have gone to this extent that they are studying the mathematics of tornadoes and cyclones in order to understand how something becomes viral. And there's a lot of research going on on how does a news item which is fake or true or whatever, how do you make it viral using social media? And the mathematics that goes into it is the mathematics of the cyclone. I mean, can you just imagine what where we are really working? Right. So, 
and no wonder that the whole Russia is for war and they want war and so on. They were brainwashed for so long and the hate and fear was imposed on them for so long from that TV screen, you know, shining on them. So the brain is damaged and uh, so people are not themselves. The forces, they, this is not only TV, TV is a means, but the forces behind the TV, yes, they want to take charge of human life and they take and that's how it happens so we have to come back to our Rigveda to see those forces instead of blaming people because they are victims truly speaking all of them of these forces and once I, we see I just it, wanted to ask I just wanted to ask Robin have you tried out open chat GPT yet no okay no so that's it's called open chat gpt uh, it's an experimental thing uh, by microsoft and it literally talks to you you are talking to that person it's a machine but it's talking to you it huh. it is absolutely like a human being it's it's something it's extraordinary and it knows everything what you are looking for from your website, from your letters, from your discussions. Absolutely. So, and it can really frame very interesting conversation with you. <laughs> so you will be surprised how wise it is. <laughs> what yeah. is this again? Open chat GPT. Okay. <laughs> PT. GPT. Open chat GPT. Isn't okay, that dangerous? Uh, Isn't that dangerous because just, you're just, in... just just try it out and uh, form your own opinion about. But isn't your in isn't all your information compromised? Then they can use your information against you. You you are talking to another human being. Let's say. And oh, is have, that so? Not to a machine. Like okay. Not to a machine. Okay. Is it communal? <laughs> I mean, is it just one person that you're talking to, or is it a group? Is it? Uh... It it's it's one it's one to one chat right now, but they can take it anywhere, and so, so it can become public. It it is it is available as an experimental thing for anybody to try out. It's AI. It's called Open Chat AI. I, Open I... Chat AI. Yes. Yes. Yeah, let's try and see what happens. Interesting. Was that what they collect information? They already collected all the information. I'm not even afraid of that. What can they collect from you? Yes, some kind of <laughs> that you like not chocolate big. or that <laughs> this or that, or that you like to have some guitar or some instrument. Or... So what? Okay, so how am I different from others? They want to sell to me more products. And that's it. There's not much to really threaten me. And in some way, even I am grateful that they are supplying with information <laughs> for the musical instruments and for different types of chocolate because I wanted that. So they know it. <laughs> so they give it to me. <laughs> no, but blood, but bloody bit, it's like this. It's not about you. It's about very young people getting positively threatened by uh, by using of this information. So right. there are a lot of victims of all these uh, things nowadays amongst the young people because they cannot mm. make out which one is true, which what is false. Mm. Uh, and the, the danger is, is the narrowing down the information scope because Absolutely. you are of that kind, so they feed you only that kind of information. Yes. So yes. you don't see yes. vaster, uh, you don't see other opinions because they are not fitting into your profile. There was a documentary, no? the, the social dilemma, mm. uh, which brought out all this. Yeah. Yes, yeah if you the, have a reference, you can. Leave yeah, us. it's called the social dilemma. I mean, it's pretty scary. Uh, it, the kind of information that they gather, uh, we think that it is very, it's not of much, but the way they influence our mind into doing anything, it's very subtle because even the tick, a sound comes up from the mobile, we are tempted to open and check it out. And they have a way of uh, doing like taking us to where they want to go. Oh, it's on Netflix. I see it. Yeah, it, it's on Netflix. 
Great. Netflix itself is a social dilemma. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Great. So we will we'll meet another time next time and continue this. Most probably we will finish the hymn. Okay. Thank you for today and uh, thank see you, you then next thank time. You. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's Vladimir.